Farmers feed the nation, and if their crops are under threat, so is Jamaica's food security. So today we get the facts on a pest that poses an ever-present threat to two particular crops we all use to spice up the pot. We're digging into various aspects of farming on this Sunday's edition of Jamaica Magazine. I'm Adrian Atkinson. Please keep watching to see the seeds being planted for your illumination. Without a doubt, tourism is Jamaica's number one industry and our dedicated workers are its greatest asset. Jamaica would not be the heartbeat of the world without you. As the industry rebounds from the impact of COVID-19 pandemic, we truly need all hands on deck, yours included. Vaccination holds the hope for tourism's full recovery. In addition to COVID-19 protocols, it is the only comprehensive way to fight the pandemic and save lives. I am therefore urging every worker in the tourism and hospitality industry, in all the subsectors, including accommodation, attractions, entertainment, transportation and craft, to do your part and get vaccinated. Do it for yourself, your family, your workplace, and your community. Do it for Jamaica, land we love. Stay safe, get vaccinated. What would the Saturday soup pot or Sunday rice and peas and chicken be without your onion and scallion? Not as flavorful, right? Well, if we can't keep our beet armyworm population under control, these crops may not make it from the field to your table. Since the 1990s, agricultural production in St. Elizabeth in particular has suffered from several major outbreaks of the beet armyworm and millions of dollars in losses to onion and scallion production. In order to manage this pest, farmers need to know what it looks like as well as how it feeds and reproduces. So today, we have a representative from RADA ready to give our farmers all the facts on how to protect their crops from the beet army worm. Welcome to Get the Facts, the program where we get the facts and provide you with information on government's policies and initiatives. I'm Theodore Henry. They look innocent and friendly, yet they are deadly to farm crops. In just minutes or hours, they can destroy an entire field, causing major loss to farmers and the agriculture sector overall. I'm talking about the vicious beet army worm. April to June is usually the high-risk season, but it's important that farmers maintain an all-year awareness and vigilance of the impact of these pests and apply the necessary precautionary measures. Sharing in this conversation is Senior Plant Health and Food Safety Officer at the Rural Agricultural Development Authority, RADA, Francine Webb-Lawrence. Welcome to the program, Mrs. Webb-Lawrence. Thank you so much. Let's jump right into this conversation about the beet army worms. Can you describe it for us? All right. The beet army worm is a lepidoptera mm. pest. Um, okay. What you will see in the field is that you'll see the worms. Right. So as with the butterflies, they start off as eggs. They hatch into these worms. Right. And these worms have about five different developmental stages. We call them instars. Right. They pupate, and that is done in the soil for about seven days, and then what emerges is the moth. A lot of farmers call them the bats. Right. right. And then the cycle continues. Well, you mentioned the eggs. The eggs, just to clarify, the eggs are above ground, and then they pupate yes. in the ground. The adults lay them typically within the scallion and onion fields on the tips of the leaves. Right. And um, those egg sacs have about 50 to about 150 eggs. Mm -hmm. So there are quite a bit of, of, of um, right. worms that can emerge from that. Right. So that, that means that my, when I did the intro about ours, that is actually a very literal thing. They can yes. destroy a feeling of ours. Yes. 
um, I tell farmers that it, it can happen overnight, mm. right? Because if you have um, just one egg sac with the potential for up to 150 eggs and all of those hatch, then you can imagine the type of damage that you can have. Right, right. When the population is very high, you can literally see the worms crossing the roads and moving to other fields. So yeah. it, like the name says, army, they can do quite a bit of damage. It's an army. Mm -hmm. How long does an outbreak usually last? Um, we have had a major outbreak in 2009, cost millions of dollars. What happens is in that area, and beta amorim in Skellen is a, is a little particular because of the nature of how St. Elizabeth, Southern St. Elizabeth, Manchester does their farming. Right. Everybody has a Skellion garden, ah. typically in the, in the front of their yard. Right. And um, the crop is, is there year round. Mm -hmm. So it's not, for instance, like in St. St. Andrew, where the Skellion is, is produced and harvested and then you don't have Skellion for a while. Skellion is always there. Right. And so it moves from field to field and what you will do is drive for miles and you will see just the stumps of wow. the skeletons in, wow. in the field. The, the, the plant is pretty resilient, so they will bounce back. Mm -hmm. um, but the damage but is done. Yes, yes. Right. Yes. Uh, uh, so you mentioned skeleton, you mentioned onion. Mm -hmm. It is called beet army worm. What, what other plants? Is it? Um, a number, it has a wide host range. So it will feed on your vegetables like your lettuce, your cabbage your beet, as it, the word suggests, um, right. feeds on watermelon, peppers, tomatoes, you name it, sweet potato, pepper, but it, it particularly likes onion and scallion. But it, it, it's not, not very discriminating. <laughs> Anything goes. Yes. You, I, we were talking about the last outbreak. Uh, when was that? And I also would like to know what steps were taken by the ministry and by RADA? Okay. Since um, we've had the beet armyworm in Jamaica since maybe about in the 70s. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's even though we have not had an issue since 2009, um, before 2009 then, it's something that has always been here for, right. for the most part. Um, we had a major outbreak, millions of dollars in 2009. And since then we've had several, um, just a few um, flare-ups. Since then, right. What we have done since then is with the assistance of um, FAO, the Food and Agriculture Organization, and the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries through their Research and Development Division, is that we have come together now and we have an assessment program. Right. The population is influenced by a number of things. Mm -hmm. One is, is the, the, the pest that is there and the host. Mm -hmm. And then you talk about the weeds mm -hmm. that are predominant in the area. You talk about the market price for the skeleton. You uh -huh. talk about the farmer's practice. And you also talk about the weather. Okay. It's very much influenced by temperature. So when you mention that April to June is a peak season, right. temperatures are going up and we also tend to get most of our rain in that period. So great for the army worm life cycle. Yes. Ah. So you, you get increased growth in the plants because of the rain, particularly in areas that are rain fed. Right. And so you have more food, can sustain a, a, a larger population. And so it, it tends to favor the outbreak. Fair enough, mm -hmm. fair enough. We had discussed uh, some of the signs uh, you see those little egg sacs. Are right. there any other signs? Um, what happens is that um, we have developed an action threshold. So we, within five um, plants, if you find one worm, mm -hmm. it means that it's time for you to do something. Wow. Right? Um, and because they work so fast, and the, the thing with bee time and worm is that they have adapted so well to, to our conditions, is that the larval, the worm stage, takes about 10 days to complete. And it had five distinct different That's instars. That's a week. <laughs> so when the temperature is right, uh -huh. and probably there is any shortage of food, they can instinctively shorten the length of time they take in that feeding worm stage, larval stage. Yeah. And so shorten the life cycle. So you ah. get them being produced far on, uh, um, much faster mm. than, than, than normal. So temperature, rainfall, usually an indicator to lis listen, be more mindful of what is happening in the field. Check the plan. Right. So right now we are factoring that with a number of different issues. If, if you have your crop and it's ready, don't leave it out in the field. Mm. You provide more food, they're going to increase their in, in right, population. Right. And they move very fast. The adult is mobile, 
the worms will feed. The, once they're laid at the tip of the, the leaves, 50 to 150, eat together, quickly enter the leaf. And that's the unique thing about scallion and onion, as opposed to the other host, is that they are protected within the vertical leaves. Yes, so it goes when you down. come in and right, you spray right. and you spray and you spray, don't you're not get getting them. through to them because they are protected inside the leaf. And then they do not eat and chew bore holes into the leaf. They eat the inner section of the leaf. And so they still leave some protection there from the chemicals. So we say that w the window of opportunity with beet armyworm in scallion and onion mm -hmm. is when you see the egg sacs, they hatch in two to three days. Right. That is your best time to come in with your chemical treatment for mm -hmm. beet armyworm. Understood. Outside of that, we also have a pheromone trap. The pheromone trap, the females give off a scent that right. attracts the males to them. Okay. And so that is impregnated in a little rubber bung that you uh -huh. hang in the field in a bottle. Yes. And it helps you to monitor the population. You see a lot of moths coming in. It means you have to do some more monitoring, check for egg sacs. Now, if these egg sacs contain up to 150 eggs, if your fields are, if field is small, we say that if you can afford to, hand pick them because you're crushing 150 at one right, point. Right, get them off, get right. them off. But at the same time, timing it, when you see the egg sacs to when they hatch is the best opportunity. The larger worms are much harder, um, much to more. Deal with. Yes, so yeah. chemicals really have little effect on them. <laughs> Lady Webb, Lawrence, we have to pick this up, but we're going to pick this up on the other side of the break. Please stay with us. We're discussing and getting the facts on the beat. Army worm, don't go anywhere. Ministry of Health, National Health Fund, PAHO WHO. Welcome back to Get the Facts. We are discussing the beet army worm and preventative measures by the Agriculture Ministry and RADA to avoid an outbreak. Our resource person is Senior Plant Health and Food Safety Officer Francine Webb Lawrence. We were discussing just how fast right. the life cycle is. And I'm very curious about the information that's available to farmers. Is there a sort of outreach program for farmers? Right, good question. We, the, the Ministry and RADA, come together each month in order to do this assessment. So we give an early warning indication as to what the potential is for beet mm. armyworm in, in your area. Right. And so um, we have partnered with the MET service again with that in terms of providing that particular information. But they have sought to keep their resources in continuing that so that the farmers are aware of what is happening. An assessmentary report is produced this month and this report goes to the specific um, RADA parishes. Mm -hmm. um, they are transmitted from there to the various farmer WhatsApp groups that are available. Uh. And from time to time, we do send out text messages to the farmers to remind them of the different measures, particularly in areas that have potential for increase. And also programs such as these, and we do, um, do radio programs in order to get the farmers to to know exactly what is happening in their area. What's been the uptake among the farmers so far? If you are able to get information that can tell you yeah. what will happen, what are the predominant stages up to three months in advance, it means that you're better able to prepare. Mm -hmm. So farmers have received this information. They, we have been having a number of different sessions with them mm -hmm. in order to further break down the assessment because it gives us quite a bit of information and also steps in order to, 
to to either maintain your your risk level or to 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 put, increase your measures to mm. keep the numbers down. So what should the farmers be doing now? All right, it's April going into May, June is when we look out for our major rainfall season. Um, so a lot of farmers are planting and so forth at this particular point in time. We're reminding farmers, those who have their crops that are near to harvest, harvest as much as possible. Prompt. Get them out of the field. Yes. yes. The longer you leave them, it's the more food that will be available for beet armor, particularly right. in areas that are above um, having a larger larval population. So you have more worms in the field. And they would get this, sorry to break it, but they would yes. get this information about larval population from RADA. Yes, yes. Excellent. And if you're not getting it, you're a farmer, you're not getting it, contact your extension officer because the information is available. Yeah. And if we're producing it, we want you to get it. So contact your extension officer if you're not getting that information. That, uh, let me just zoom in here. Contact your extension officer, go to the RADA office yes. or? Yes. All right. Or they can contact the Ministry of Agriculture, Research and Development Division, who also goes out with us um, on a monthly basis. And they are the ones who are actually producing the assessment report itself from Got the you. information that we generate. Got you. I, I, want, to, I want to keep asking about mm -hmm. the farmers. Uh, what, uh, you mentioned that the information is available, but you were discussing the bung and the pheromone trap. Yes. This stuff is available from Rada? From Rada, right. Mm -hmm. Um, we also have a, an input supplier who, who also retails and sells the, the pheromone lure. Mm -hmm. So the, there is a commercial trap that you can purchase online as well. Right. However, it's as simple as just getting a gallon bottle and cutting the holes out, setting that up in right. the field. And that will help you, you keep that in the field as long as you have the crop there. And mm -hmm. it gives you an indication of what your population level is. Ah, mm -hmm. I see. And there is no, I, I'm asking as an amateur farmer, mm -hmm. there is no harm from putting it before the, the, um, the plants start to grow, just having it there all the time? Um, good question. What it will do, because then it feeds on so many other things, it can keep that pheromone trap there. It gives you an indication of what your beta um population is like in your location, okay. with or without your onion or your scallion crop. So not tied to the season, just just do it exactly for information. Exactly, exactly. Wonderful, wonderful. What final word would you like to leave with our um, farmers who are watching? At this point in time, I'd want our farmers to. We've we've always been asking them to to step up on their measures. We want to say thank you to the farmers for following through and 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 for assisting us because we are the stakeholders along with you mm. and the ministry um, research and development division for we have not had an outbreak in in some time so we want to big yeah. up the farmers for that and and to encourage them to keep up their monitoring methods scouting is important in order for you to act you must know what is in the field mm -hmm. so we say at least two times but when once you, those numbers keep going up, you sometimes you have to step up to even three times to know right. exactly what is there. And we want to know what is there because it then informs what you can do. Larger worms are not very affected by the pesticides. And right. so we say, look out for your egg sacs, target your tiny worms. Harvest when you can, be mindful of the weeds that are around because they feed especially like on in St. Elizabeth on the guinea grass. So once the rain starts and it starts to flush, they will also be feeding on that and can come across to your crop as well. Right, right. You're establishing a new field. If you have old fields that are not being managed, you're going to be at greater risk if you're putting your new onion and scallion fields close to them. Mm. So management of beet armyworm is an area-wide program. So it's not just a farmer on his field, but it's the farmers within a location yes. to keep the numbers down. So that's important to remember that you have to be mindful of what you're doing and also for your neighbor. So, you know, work together. To to, right. Work right. together. You know, you mentioned, you mentioned that RADA goes out and gets the information, but also it seems that the farmers should be supplying information as well. Yes, so. that is a good point. We'd also want the farmers to be involved in, in the assessment that we do. Right. Keep your farm on trap. We can use that information as well. Um, do the monitoring. Give us some feedback as what is, to what is happening in your area. Wonderful, mm. wonderful. I want to thank you so much for giving us so much information. On thank the you so programs. much for, for having me. Wonderful. This has been Get the Facts. Our guest was Senior Plant Health and Food Safety Officer at the Rural Agricultural Development Authority, RADA, Francine Webb-Lawrence. Thank you for watching. And until next time, I am Theodore Henry.
Take care. Register your alma mater for the Forestry Department's Maitree Legacy Promotion and be a part of the preservation of Jamaica land we love. St. Catherine High Past student Prime Minister Andrew Holness recently participated in the initiative. It is not just because it sounds like a very nice thing to do to plant trees. It is a very real strategic response in being a responsible government, a responsible nation, a caring nation about our planet and our atmosphere and our climate and our environment to plant trees. Let us highlight your contribution to the My Tree Legacy promotion by submitting videos or pictures of you leaving your mark. Every tree counts. Plant a tree today and keep climate change away. Let's stay in the field of farming. Actually, let's talk about how you can get started. Here are some tips for new entrants to farming. Farming is a way of life, especially here in Jamaica. Today, an increasing number of young people are getting involved. Back then, persons used to look down on agriculture based on the stigma that agriculture is for a particular group of persons. But I am proud to say that that stigma has been reduced significantly. So no longer is agriculture a last option. It's a primary option where persons are now interested in pursuing even studies at the master's level in agriculture. Getting started in agriculture can be tricky, so there are a number of things new farmers need to be aware of. For young persons who would like to get involved in agriculture, the first thing I would say to them, they have to first assess their interest. Agriculture is a very wide industry with different sectors, and so they first need to look at, do I have an interest in crop production or animal production? Crop production is the process of growing produce for domestic and commercial purposes, whereas animal production is the technology applied to keeping animals for profit you know, feeding, rearing, and breeding. That's just the basics. So for the next few minutes, we'll learn more about getting started in crop production. We at RADA, um, and the field staff particularly, when we are uh, engaged um, about young persons getting into farming, when they approach us, one of the main things we want to emphasize is about um, training. A lot of persons who want to um, venture into agriculture and they see it as something that they can get into without um, you know, getting that technical knowledge because it's easy to go and get the land prepared and sow the seeds and all of that. But there's a lot of uh, um, other issues you have to consider. You have to consider the pest and the disease control. As you say, you have to look at the weather condition, you have to look at the type of crop, different crop uh, require different um, environmental conditions. Two major things we also emphasize to new entrant farmers is uh, we look at the, the markets. Don't just jump into um, uh, uh, production without thinking about your market. I know it's sort of tempting for a lot of persons when prices are high and it looks very, look very um, nice and you, know, you can get a lot of income. But that's not always the case. Because by the time you put in that crop, the price is, is usually, and the crop come in, the price is usually low. So we look at the market. And another thing we look at, the cost of production. A lot of um, new entrance farmers, they want to get into production without looking at what it costs to produce a crop. That is very important because that is how you can determine if you are um, will able to make a profit based on how you estimate your cost and your, your market price and all of that. So we emphasize the, the cost of production. So, that, so those are some of the things to emphasize to new entrance farmers. 
So there are different options such as agro-processing that young persons can venture. So you don't have to be looking at agriculture as going in the sun, sweating. You can still do that practice. That's the traditional practice. But there are some contemporary practices that involves technology, such as hydroponics and aquaponics. And so young persons can look at that option as well. So don't picture a farmer as this person in dirty clothes, this person riding a donkey. Some of the farmers know they are driving the biggest vehicle you can think of, and they live in the best household that you can think of. Another thing that you need to do is to partner with RADA, in particularly the agri-linkages, to help you seek possible markets before you venture into the field of agriculture. And what you can also do is to do a SWOT analysis. When I say a SWOT analysis, once you identify your interest, you're going to be now looking at your strengths, assess the strengths, you're going to assess the weaknesses and how you can overcome them, you're going to look at the opportunities that exist, and you're now going to be looking at the threats. So, one of your threats could be your, I wouldn't say competitor, because in agriculture, I don't want to give the impression that we are competing. We're all in this thing together. But there are some threats such as disaster, how can you bounce back or how can you mitigate certain effects? So a SWOT analysis is very important when you're looking at agriculture as a young person. With all that information in mind, get started with your research. Start farming as you can help to make Jamaica the place of choice to live, work, raise families and do business by growing what we eat so we can eat what we grow. I want to get rid of that stigma that is attached to agriculture. And I want persons to understand that if we don't have farmers, we won't have any people. So where there's no food, the people will perish. So look at agriculture as a business and not as a traditional disregarded occupation. It's a very lucrative, very vibrant occupation that you should all think of. What are we are you full of our roots and culture? <laughs> that was in Jamaica 60. <laughs> Jamaica 60? What a piece of news, Miss Matty. I feel like my heart going boss up. Just in. The island of Jamaica is on the verge of celebrating its 60th year of independence. Oh, holy, we have to celebrate now. <laughs> They say the people them in you know, them come here, you know. But you see, when our people decide, say the other people them free paper, oh no, them say if it's war, start it, whatever. We are collect medal, panther, collect you know? medal. Come on, tongue, we give them a tongue. The celebrations are slated to begin on January 1st, 2022. Organized by the Ministry of Culture, Gender, Entertainment, and Sport, we have more in this report. I am on site and planning activities are ablaze. Persons are advised to download the Reggae Jamaica app to know what it pre why it pre <laughs> activities for the Jamaica 60 celebration yeah. I don't know the app to get the updates then We are out of time on the show. We have another already in production for your viewing pleasure tomorrow. Visit our YouTube channel or website jis.gov.jm for more content like this. We welcome your feedback, so let your voice be heard on our Instagram, Facebook and Twitter pages. This has been Jamaica Magazine. I'm Adrian Atkinson. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday and see you next time. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.